Hi guys, this is Nadia Andreeva, the author of Happy Belly, Women's Guide to Feeling Vibrant, Light and Balanced. And this is the Happy Belly interview series where I'm interviewing various experts, both wellness, health, chefs, Ayurveda experts. And today we have an amazing couple. Um, David is the founder of Vikas in New York, an extraordinary center where people come to fully embody their power and develop the strategies and their body and mind necessary to fulfill an extraordinary life of purpose and passion. Originally trained as a chiropractor in 1994, David has a profound personal experience that catalyzed a deep soul calling to learn and master his exquisite form of spinal care called network spinal analysis. And for the last two decade, decades, he has been in service to thousands of people offering his extraordinary work from his heart and soul. David has the honor of traveling around the world, serving as a personal practitioner to well-known leaders, including Anthony Robbins, and his life is inspired by what he knows humanity requires, empowering men to claim their masculine core while being the presence for women to blossom into their feminine essence. Love it. <laughs> um, Kathleen is an expert in feminine soul growth, growth and an international motivational speaker. She specializes in inspiring women to own their magnificence by unleashing all of who they are, being fully expressed, loving fiercely, and living powerfully. Her talks on living in line with your soul standards and having the courage to manifest your dreams is a core, of, is a core part of her message. And both David and Kathleen work together, and they're also doing retreats, which we'll talk about towards the end of the interview. But guys, thank you so much for being with us, and I'm super excited to get some of the wisdom bits, um, especially connected to digestion. Thanks for having us. It's awesome yeah. to be with your group. So tell me, um, what is a happy belly for you? How do you know if your belly is happy? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. A happy belly for me means I'm feeling alive, feeling energetic, and uh, I'm feeling passionate, I'm feeling vibrant, and I'm actually happy. <laughs> David and I are very tuned into our bellies, like to the nth degree, actually, where we'll check in with each other and see how our bellies are feeling. On Welcome day. to the club. <laughs> yeah. How's your digestion? How's your movements? Yeah. <laughs> Because it directly impacts our mood and our emotions and our state of being. And it's so profound. And he's helped me become aware of it. When I'm a little grouchy or grumpy, he's helped me recognize it's those times when my digestion is dysfunctioning and my belly is unhappy. So it's yeah. been really cool. For, he's helped me shed the light on that. Beautiful. <laughs> I love that. that. That's what intimacy is about, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... um how like has it always been the focus of your life or did at some point you suddenly understand understood like digestion is way more important than i realized yeah that's a great question so for me i i'd say my belly always determined what type of a mood i was in mm -hmm. and it probably wasn't until the past maybe 20 years that i started understanding through my teachings you know through <laughs> Back. Just 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh my God, there's, there's a whole nerve supply that comes from your spine that supplies your stomach and, and will determine whether or not you're getting proper nerve function to the vital organs that could greatly you know, affect your digestion. And then a lot of it also just has to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, tell her. Which part? The last three years, your digestion. Oh, yes. So over the last three years... Since we're together. Ka okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kathleen's been ridiculously instrumental in helping me really become aware of the foods that I'm eating and what really agrees with me and what doesn't agree with me. Like We like to, we like to look at foods uh, as, uh, are they energy poor? Are they energy neutral? Or are they energy rich? Are they like really feeding me on a level where I feel vibrant and I feel alive and I feel like it's like feeding my soul? So it goes beyond macronutrients. Like yeah. beyond protein and carbs. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. But we're also very present to, you know, you could eat according to your blood type. You could eat according to your Ayurvedic type. The past uh, year and a half, we've been completely gluten-free. And I'd say that that's made a tremendous impact on both of us as far as just feeling amazing. Because for our blood type, which is both, we're both O, 
O positive, I believe. Mm-hmm. We gluten just causes inflammation in our gut. So regardless of everything else that's going on in our life, if if we have gluten, it just messes with our system. And it's so funny that you mentioned it because Ayurvedic types and blood types are incredibly close. Totally. Uh, so my AB. Mm-hmm. Is like as close to Ayurvedic vata type and pitta mix, mix mixture together. So it's really cool that you guys experimented with it. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell me, um, David, in your experience, um, what is the connection between alignment, spinal and hip alignment, and the efficiency of digestion? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a great question. So it was back in 1895 that chiropractic was actually discovered and there was a janitor in a school who had lost his hearing and the town healer who was known as the magnetic healer, he was feeling the gentleman's spine and felt that there was a, an, a misalignment in his neck and through a very gentle touch he was able to realign the person's neck and the gentleman's hearing came back. And then little by little people from towns all over would come and they had all sorts of ailments and different symptoms and health problems. And this gentleman would just feel along their spine where is their misalignment. And just through creating greater alignment in the spine, he noticed that all their symptoms and their diseases were clearing up. And that's pretty much how chiropractic was born. So people would look to the spine to understand if there's a health problem, we first look to the spine. Yeah, and in yoga, spine is considered like the main, that's where your main energy channel is. If the spine is out of balance, everything is out of balance. Mm -hmm. If digestion is out of balance, it also gets everything out of balance. Oh, yes. So tell us a little bit on a day-to-day schedule because I know you travel a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, so, and you have a busy schedule and you have lectures and clients. How do you make sure that your digestion stays regular, that your belly stays happy? We have a few strategies. We absolutely take, Please share. We take a super high-dose probiotic mm-hmm. first, um, daily. We have superfood smoothies that we have every day, no matter where we are. We travel to a lot of the same areas frequently, so we have blenders stashed in Florida, California, Colorado, (laughs) and if it's somewhere new, we'll buy a $20 blender, and we make smoothies in our hotel Mm -hmm. with our greens and with our maca and our bee pollen and our goji and our flaxseed. So basically to feed your body with nutrients. Feed our body with nutrients every day, no matter what. We take our green powders, which also have probiotic and prebiotics in them. And we really, every day are mindful just to eat. We're we're high protein eaters. We're blood type O and we just eat the best. You know, the more protein and vegetables that we eat. So we're attuned to that. Therefore, we have regular routines just every day where I'm feeding us that way. And it's just yeah. part, of our, part of our lives. It's natural at this point. And I, I love that you're recognizing the fact, like underlying to people that we're blood type O. That's why it works for us. And for somebody who is a different type, it's not necessarily something that would work. So I really love that you highlight that individuality. Mm, absolutely. Is and there I- anything else that you do? Definitely. Well, I think a big part of our digestive health is our emotional health, mm-hmm. something that David and I are really tuned into. And a daily practice that we have, which may be unusual for your listeners, is that we make the noises of our emotions throughout the day to help us be more fully expressed. Can you give me an example? How are you feeling now? So we do this. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. (laughs) So, you know, rather than holding all that in our gut, you know, the unexpressed emotions, we give ourselves permission throughout the day to be playful about it. And even just on our own, I'll hear David across the house just, ah, you know, making the noises of whatever the emotions are. So we recognize the direct correlation between emotional health and gut and happy bellies. Yeah. So (laughs) it's fun, too, once you realize. Well, everyone knows, you know, the heart what type of emotions the heart holds, like love and and gratitude and grace and compassion. And it's said that the gut really is the home that holds the lower emotions, like the rage and the jealousy and frustration and sadness and grief. So it's really important that you, you give yourself that rite of passage to express that through movement and through sound. And our culture hasn't really been taught that it's okay to really make the sound. We, we at a very young age, we're taught to go into our minds. If, if something's wrong as a little kid, your parents will instantly say, what's the matter? Is everything okay? And 
they're making you think, they're making you get into your head instead of just allowing you to fully be with the emotions. So as a culture, we have so many emotions that are stored in our gut, and then so many people are flooding doctor's offices and, and hospitals with all the problems in the stomach, when it could be just the simplicity of just expressing you know, the emotion that's being buried there. Yeah, and I think it's so cool that you're mentioning it because most women, and I know just because I work mostly with women, um, if you ask them to relax their stomach, uh, they can't relax it. It's hard as a stone. Like you can't even stick the finger in there. Um, so I think you're right. A lot of people are carrying a lot of stored emotions. Mm. Yeah. So what are some things or foods that upset your stomach or make your belly unhappy? Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Well, anything that is obviously has a lot of, you know, is gluten will in cause inflammation of my gut. And I could feel that within 15 minutes after eating it. And I'll actually feel foggy in my head. Mm -hmm. Like they call it brain fog, where I, I just can't focus, I can't keep my concentration. Yeah. So for sure, if, you know, if you eat breads or things that are really have gluten in them, I'll feel it instantly. Another thing we notice is if we eat too much oil in one sitting, that our tummies hurt within probably ten or fifteen minutes. Like we took a flight home three days ago from California, and we had some organic olive oil potato chips, and it was like a treat for us. And we hadn't eaten properly, and we ate too many of them, and we both had a tummy ache immediately from too much oil and from the yeah. fried food, also from the potato chips. So we're very sensitive to fried foods and to um, poor quality oils. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What the, else? Well, the, the other thing that we're present to is that like Kathleen has really uh, taught me uh, not to food combine. So yeah. if, if we just had a liquid, you know, if we had greens then you have to wait about two hours before you have solids. You learned so much. Actually, you have, to, you have, actually have to wait about a half of an hour. After fruit. Yeah. But if, <laughs> but if you have a solid meal, then you actually have to wait a good two hours before you would have the greens. So we're, yeah. we're of not food combining. Impressive, right? <laughs> well, food combining. Uh, and it, it's, it's amazing how even simple things, like not eating fruit after meals, can make such a big difference for people. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's no more ice cream after dinner. None of that happening, right? <laughs> See, you're so Ayurvedic, guys. I know. We love Ayurveda. We're, vada, we're Pitta Vadas. <laughs> okay. Yeah, me too. Awesome. So um, tell us uh, a little bit more on the, if, if we're talking to people who, who are watching it, what are some things that they can start doing, maybe start experimenting with, to find what works for their body because it seems that you found what works for yours and I'm sure when you're working with people physically it's a lot easier to feel like what would work for that particular person but if somebody is on the journey of just figuring stuff out for themselves where do they start? I have a tool that I used to use as a health coach for a lot of years and it's just a simple food journal you know where you track all your foods, what you've eaten, and you track your symptoms every few hours. And you're actually able to see the pattern if you do that for a week. You can see, oh, my tummy hurt Wednesday at 5, Monday at 4, and Saturday at 3, and what is the common underlying factor. That's a really great way to bring some awareness. Um, the second thing I would say is to really allow yourself to slow down and become more present with your meal. So... Um, that's huge because there are yeah. times there are times where I'll say, "Oh my God, I don't remember just eating that meal," and Kathleen's like, "Were you, were you present with your food?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> and, and when I'm not present with the meal, I could really feel different. So the slowing down is huge. Just you know, pick a place to actually eat where you feel you're not rushed. You know, you're not distracted. You're not just multitasking, but you could actually be present with your food, as so though you're having a conversation with somebody you love. Put the phone away, yeah. turn the computer <laughs> off. Why are these things so challenging for us? But they are, right? We're all super busy managing our lives. But if you could even sit with someone, and you could become more present um, to what's going on with your body as you're eating that meal. So those are a few things that we try to practice, and we get away from it. We're human, you know, but we do our best to, to slow down and be as present as possible because the information is there. And the more that you slow down and do become aware, the signals get louder. And that's something that 
is an amazing part of the work that David offers is that it helps you become more attuned to those signals. The work through the spine turns down the monkey mind mm -hmm. and turns down the thinking and the overthinking. It actually helps the body come back online so that those signals are louder and you have more acuity for the little messages that are coming through all day. So we have it from a few angles that we work. We're very yeah. fortunate. You know, I receive the care that he offers. So we have developed that acuity to really tune back in and be more connected. Yeah. Yeah, and I think once you tune back in, it's a matter of first hearing your body, but then actually doing what the body is telling you. Because uh -huh. then in Ayurveda, they say that once you hear your body and you don't act again, along with that wisdom, then you're acting against the wisdom and you're going to be suffering even more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we what, resonate. But what what started me actually on this whole journey is when I was 21 years old. I had a job uh, right out of college selling uh, photocopy machines, and maybe at least two months in a row, I would wake up and I had pain in my belly, very similar to what you know a doctor would call an ulcer. Mm -hmm. I could have gone to all sorts of doctors and been given the fancy names, whether it's Crohn's or you know colitis or whatever they want to call it, ulcers and given pills, or maybe even somebody would have recommended surgery. But the truth was, I knew in my gut, no pun intended, that this was related to I was, I had a job that I just wasn't passionate about and wasn't feeding my heart, it wasn't feeding my soul. Yeah. So literally, the day after I had quit, my stomach just felt complete relief, and those symptoms were gone. So there's an example where it wasn't even related to the food, but I had the awareness that my body's really trying to give me a powerful message here. And luckily, I, I had the courage to honor the message. Yeah, I'm, we would have been such a huge loss if you stayed as a copy man. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so um, tell me and everyone who's watching the interview about the amazing retreats that you're doing. Ooh la la. So <laughs> David and I have launched a series of retreats called Soul Powered. Mm. And it's a weekend to align the body, tame the mind, and ignite the soul. And it is a luxurious experience. We rent luxury houses. We just did our first event in Palm Springs. The next event is in Cabo, Mexico. We're doing another event in Hawaii in October. And it's basically coming together, just an intimate group of 20 people to be in an energy-rich, gorgeous, inspiring environment to receive five sessions with David on the tables, to be nurtured with really clean, healthy, organic meals. We have some women's movement that I lead called Fem Flow. We've got some men's movement called Balls In, Man on Fire. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> to really help people get more into their core nature and help people surrender and feel aligned with the truth of who they are and walk away a different version than who they showed up as feeling more embodied and connected to the truth and their magnificence. And they, it was magical. We just had our first event two weeks ago, and we're delighted to really be launching this and offering it to humanity in a bigger way. So we couldn't be more thrilled. That's really cool, and I heard wonderful things. Thank you. Yeah. So, guys, we're going to put a link so you can uh, find out more about the retreats um, and hopefully join one of them. And make sure to subscribe so you can watch all other Happy Belly interviews. And um, David and Kathleen also have a center in New York, right? Yep. It's called Vikaz, V-I-K-A-Z. Vikaz is Sanskrit. It means to open, blossom, become visible, and shine. And it's on 20th Street in Manhattan. Okay, perfect. So you can, guys... Um, come in and check out the center and maybe get a treatment um, and make sure to get your happy belly guide to learn more about food combining and how to keep your digestion healthy and i'll see you soon bye thank you thank you so much